Howdy everyone. Welcome to the next Positive Gravity. I'm Doug Howe and I want to talk to you today about this piece. Uh, in the last video that I did, this uh, was also on this piece and it was a walnut bowl that I was turning a little while ago and I left it on the lathe for probably too long. It was maybe a week when I was busy doing other things and it got really hot out. It cracked and I, I couldn't continue with it the way it was. So uh, you'll see in that other video, I used my Dremel to carve a bunch of channels into it. I carved, you know, I, I cut in where there was cracks and cleaned those out and made them into channels that I could then fill with epoxy. So there's a bunch of um, channels in here now that eventually are going to be transparent. Uh, so I carved those channels fairly deeply into this walnut and then I did that with my Dremel and embedded it in epoxy. I didn't show any of that. I've shown a lot of epoxy casting videos. So on this one, I just focused, I'm focusing on the piece itself, not the process of the epoxy. But you can see there's epoxy on here. And I started turning it. So you can see the walnut. You can see these channels that I carved. So I wanted to bring you in at this point. Um, I'm going to continue turning this. And I need to turn a bunch out of the inside. I need to turn a bit out of it off the outside and get rid of all this extra epoxy. And the goal is to get this thin enough that you can see through all these channels. There, I tinted them with a light blue, um, kind of like an ice, ice blue, glaciery kind of color. So we'll see. You know, ideally, you should be able to see that. Uh, I think it could be pretty neat. So let's get to that. Uh, if you like my videos and you like the things that I make. I do sell these on positivegravity.etsy.com, so you can go see, you know, a lot of the things I show here and other things that I don't show here that are for sale over there. Uh, I also do custom work, so if you want, you know, if you like the concepts that I do, but you want something else, get in touch with me at uh, pgcraftshop at gmail.com, and you can uh, communicate with me directly, and we can work something out. So back to this piece. Um, Let's get it turning and see if we can clean up the extra and make this into a cool bowl. Let's do it. So at this point, I uh, decided I really need to work on the outside of the bowl before I turn the inside of the bowl. There's more work to do on the outside and it's really the shape of the outside of the bowl that's gonna determine uh, what work you need to do on the inside. So I'm switching out the jaws, taking off the faceplate, and uh, using the jumbo jaws there to uh, hold the bowl so I can work the rest of the outside um, and work on the base there. So that's what I'm doing at this point. around the base of the bowl, that all needs to be removed down to the wood to reveal those channels. Uh, after getting a quick tool sharpening there, I'm continuing to remove that extra resin, taking some you know, gentle cuts there. Uh, working with the jumbo jaws, you can't take big bites. You need to be gentle. Uh, lest the bowl come off the chuck. You can see I'm starting to get down to wood now, getting things rounded up. So the uh, channels are starting to really show on the sides of the bowl and so now I'm actually cleaning up the channel on the bottom that's really the forms the tenon getting the extra resin out of there so I can use that tenon uh, when I turn the bowl around. So now I'm ready to mount up the bowl by the tenon and uh, I've got the outside basically shaped and now I can start removing material from the inside where I need to remove most of the material. 
the channels were carved into the outside of the bowl and they didn't go all the way through on purpose so that the bowl would stay together while I cast it in resin. So now I need to remove that material from the inside and expose those channels all the way through to the inside of the bowl. Uh, notice how I'm working on the outer part of the rim first, uh, or the edge of the bowl. Um, you don't want to work on the lower portions of the bowl first. You want to work on the outer parts first because they're going to become more flexible and fragile and if you try to work the whole wall of the bowl at the same time you're much more likely to get warping uh, flexing of the bowl walls while you're trying to cut them and you won't be able to get clean cuts. So work on those um, walls of the bowl from the lip down and once you get the lip in the upper part of the bowl the way you want it try not to return to it with your cutting implements. Uh, and then work your way down to the base of the bowl and hollow out the bottom at the end. In order to get good support for my uh, tools around the base of the bowl, I've switched to my bowl uh, support there, that S-shaped piece. Uh, that allows me to get support on my tool much closer to the base of the bowl. Without that, I'd be reaching, you know, past the past the tool rest too far, and that becomes unstable for the cutting tool. So now I'm trying to slowly expose those channels taking small cuts, small gentle cuts along the way, trying to get those channels exposed. It's actually uh, having to go thinner than I thought it would have to go, so I'm trying to be very careful at this point. very thin passes uh, with, uh, with the tools, just trying to creep up on it, get it closer to those channels. beautiful ice blue is really starting to show now. Uh, thickness is getting mighty thin, uh, but I need to keep going to get the effect I was looking for, so continuing to take little bits off and hoping that it stays together. Look at that beautiful pattern that's emerging in that uh, walnut. 
and I really like the contrast, the color of the blue with that uh, dark and the light colors in the walnut. So I'm really excited about this piece now and I look forward to sharing the finishing of it with you in my uh, last video in this series. So look forward to that in the coming weeks. Thanks. Thank you.